Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. We are recording this Coffee with Coaches podcast episode in the weirdest week of the year between Christmas and New Year's. And we were just talking before we started recording about how how weirdly great of a week this can be. Obviously, you probably had recently been with family, which is fantastic. Maybe they're now they're gone, which is also fantastic, depending on your family. But we're just we we're talking about how how much space for not just recollection and review and looking forward we have during this week, but also just how how light things feel. And I think we'll get into that a little bit in a bit, but that's all that preamble to say, thank you for being here. Welcome. <laughs> you're probably listening to this once your year has already gotten some good, some good momentum. So hopefully that is the case and you've got some good traction already. I am Kevin. And today I have with me Melina Panetta. Did I pronounce that right, Melina Panetta? Yes, you did. Excellent. Melina is a success coach that helps ambitious women become 20% happier by taking the leap to live up to their full potential. And we're going to talk a lot about happiness. 20% is nice. It's, you know, it's good to be specific. It's good to have specific goals, even for something as difficult to quantify as happiness. So I, I'm so grateful for you to be here today. Thank you for being here. Welcome to the podcast, Melina. Hi, Kevin. It's a pleasure and an honor to be here with you. So thank you. Let's, let's start at the beginning. What got you into coaching? What, what prompted you to start a coaching practice? And you know, how, did, how did things get going for you? So I've been a natural coach my entire life. I'm an ex-corporate, what I like to say, yes girl. For 20 years, I sold software for corporate America. And throughout my career, you know, I've had a lot of successes, but you know, I was always the one who on the surface looked happy, but inside I was frantic. I was tired. A lot of times I was lonely. And many times I was very discouraged because my inner voice was always saying, you know, you can do better or this isn't working out. And so what happened was, is, you know, I took my own leap, Kevin, I took my own leap and <laughs> so many people. So I used to head up women's groups and women empowerment groups on my own through each of my positions. And, you know, I naturally was a coach for women in the professional world hmm. and Everyone kept saying that, why aren't you a coach? Why aren't you a leader? And, you know, where I came from, it's mostly male dominated. So it's really, you know, no more, no really time for a female coach to empower women. And so about six years ago, I decided to go part-time to school to become a credited coach, life coach for women. And for the past five years, I've been helping ambitious women to what I like to say, it'd be 20% happier through my signature program called the Happiness Blueprint. Lovely. And I, I, I just, I'm looking at your website, which of course we'll, we'll make sure to mention at the end of the podcast, but I just love how, I mean, it's, it's happiness centered. Everything of everything is about happiness, but then you don't just say, you don't just throw the word happy around willy nilly. You actually define it. And I, th I feel like, and that kind of leads me to my next question. The one that I usually love to ask all the coaches I talk to, throw the word out there and interpret this word, however you would like. I ask what you're doing in your coaching practice today that you would say is unique. Unique can mean a lot of things because obviously there's, you know, we're all snowflakes, but we're all kind of doing the same business, but everybody's got their spin, their, their pivot, their thing that they focus on or that they do exceedingly well that really makes their coaching practice special. And so clearly yours is based around happiness, but I'd love for you to talk a little bit more about that. Sure. So in my practice, we really focus on how your brain works hmm. and what your personal journey is not only with positive psychology, but also with neuroscience. Mm. And so it's really how to tame the voice in your head without losing your unique skills, your unique edge in mm. your life, right? So that you can actually do the thing that you really want to do in your life. Because it's really interesting how people think that when you have X, Y, Z, or you accomplish X, Y, Z, you'll be happy. Mm. But in reality is, when you're happy first, you need to be happy first in order to get to where you want to go. So in my practice, we really focus on courage, conviction, and your own vulnerability to rewire your brain so you can show up every day, starting on day one, to get to where you want to go. And it's focusing on the tiny steps to get you there every single day. You know, 1% difference every single day makes a world of difference in the end. And so sometimes you do have to take a couple steps back before you can move forward, but it's okay. We're all human. And so what my practice is really focused on is self-discovery on how your brain really works 
So you can sense your emotions and learn to master them mm -hmm. as you move towards whatever goal, being your truest self. I, I imagine um, that being in touch with and aware of your emotions is something that is especially difficult for women, especially high performing women in the workplace, because that I'll try to put this as delicately as possible. Men do a terrible job of allowing for that in the workplace. Um, and that's so, and so a lot of times, I, I, at least that I've found women who are very high achievers, very successful, very, like very professionally successful have in some way or another had to find a way to maybe tamp that down or set their emotions to the side or in some way not engage with them fully in order to attain the success they, that they want or in, in the way that they think they have to. And I love the way that you're, you kind of interrupt that, that old pattern that thankfully is now expiring. And I love the way that you talk about, um, it's not just about finding the happiness within yourself and getting in touch, but I also, I really loved something that you mentioned early on about losing your edge. And I know that there are some people who do believe that if they get too in touch with their happiness, if they are too happy, they'll lose something that helped to make them successful in the first place. And I love that you just basically flip that on its head. It's like, no, 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 no. no you will become more successful and happy. It's not success or happiness. And I, just, I love all the different ways that you invert or reposition or recontextualize what happiness and emotional awareness can mean specifically in the workplace. I love that. Thank there's you. no question yes. there. I just wanted to say, I just wanted yeah, to say thank you. I no, and you, you <laughs> totally summed it up really, really well. And, you know, in this day and age, it is just so important to really understand who you truly are without the baggage attached to the idea of yourself or the idea of who you need to be right. Mm -hmm. When you are your truest self, that is when you can have both success and happiness. And that's when it happens. A lesson I learn, try to learn every day. <laughs> yes. Let's talk. You know what? We're coming up on the new year. Let's talk about what's coming up next for your for you and your coaching practice. I, of course, you know, you're in the office. We're doing this podcast right now. Um, <laughs> what do you have cooking for 2022? So for 2022, I'm working on my new training. So my program is called the Happiness Blueprint. Mm -hmm. But in that training, I'm going to offer new training on confidence and really how to have boosted confidence that is unshakable for the new year. Because no matter what your goals are, if you're confident in who you are, right, then that will get you there faster and you feel good about it, right? But the point is, is that people think confidence is a switch in a moment, mm -hmm. which in, in reality, you know, there's a lot of buzzwords out there on how to have confidence and how to get confidence in a second and a minute and it's a state of mind. But in reality, you know, leaning towards your truth and having confidence takes patience. Mm -hmm. It's over time where you learn to do that. So it's not the woman who walks in the room and seems to command the room or been able to speak her mind when she wants. Yes, that might be okay for her. But what does confidence mean for you? For every single person, if there's a different definition, right? And so what I think happens now, there's a lot of comparisonitis out there where people look at, you know, somebody who's further down the road or somebody you admire or what, whatever the case may be. And whatever they're doing that you compare yourself to is always something that you find a weakness in yourself. And then that's something that leaves you feeling less confident. So my new training in 2022, which is launching in January, is going to focus on how to have unshakable confidence that is true to you. And what does it mean for you to achieve your goals and what you'd like to accomplish? And, you know, it doesn't really need to be, I need to lose 50 pounds or I want to make a million dollars. It could be, hey, you know what? Tiny steps. I'd like to speak up for myself. I'd like to learn to say no. I'd like to set these boundaries and have them feel good about it, right? And not feel like crap because I sent a boundary. <laughs> So, you know, it's, it's the things like that that happen in your daily life or asking for what you need, right? Maybe having the confidence to ask for what you need because people aren't mind readers. So it doesn't, so when you think about goals many times in the new year, and I think that's why so many people's goals diminish after about three weeks is that, you know, everybody has these high, big aspirations that seem to be way out there. But the reality is, is that in your daily life, that is the key to your success is the things that you do every single day, the 1%, the tiny steps that you do every single day. 
And so it could be something as simply as asking for you want, for what you want, you know, not feeling frustrated anymore because you have more control over your emotions, right? Feeling connection with other people. Maybe you're someone who wants to work on your relationships, right? Having the courage to take more risks, you know, to put yourself out there, to try something different than you haven't tried before, right? Trusting your intuition, mm -hmm. right? And stop second guessing yourself every time you want to go and do something. So those are all the things that will be contained in how to master and how to start in my new training. And I love, I love that the, the building blocks are, they're so simple and they're, they're almost common sense, but we have an, un, we have an uncommon lack of awareness of them. And also right. that, and again, I think you, I think you had the, you had the key to it right up at the top, patience. And I know a lot of times here in like the new year, people get those big goals like you're talking about and they fizzle out after three weeks because you try to do it all at once or you try to front load everything. Or if you don't see a particular version of progress, if it doesn't manifest in a particular way, you get discouraged and you kind of recede. And there's that, and that, that patient building, those, those daily steps. They might sound boring, but I mean, that's how great things get done, including happiness, which is, I believe, a great thing to be building and working towards every day. And I'd, I love your approach quite a bit. It's funny, actually, I forget who, where the quote comes from initially, but just yesterday in a meeting, I had the, it just dawned on me to say, as we were conversing about something that comparison is the thief of joy. I forget who said that some, some writer, some, some time back or whatever, probably said it, but I've always loved that. It's always stuck in my head as just, because our brains naturally do that. We're, we're comparative, we're pattern recognizers. You know, we see things, we take one thing compared to the other, we weigh it, we measure. It's kind of, it's part of how our brains work. But we are, I think you, I think you called it out very sharply. We are sometimes slave to that kind of comparison thinking. And that's not going to get us where we want to be. It's not going to help us have the happiness and the success that I think we all want. And quite frankly, we can all have. And I, yes. yeah. it's an abundant world. There's enough mm -hmm. for everyone, right? There's mm -hmm. more than enough for everyone. And you know, the question I like to ask a lot, Kevin, is, is even if you were at the top of the mountain, you reached it, you're at the top, then what? What does that mean mm -hmm. to you? Mm -hmm. right? I like to climb mountains. So I'll, on to the next one. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not a destination. There's always person. going to be another, <laughs> the point is, right? There's always going to be another thing. So yeah. why not be happy in the now? Yeah, why not be happy on your way up and it's on your way down turning. and then on your way up the next one? Exactly, yeah. <laughs> exactly right. I, I could do this all day. <laughs> I should let you go. But first, um, where do you like people to find you? So my website is melinapanetta.com. And on there, you can find how to work with me one-on-one. -on -one. We also have a group, small group that I offer once a quarter in the Happiness mm -hmm. Blueprint. Mm -hmm. um, I also will have information on my training on that page as well for 2022. But you can also find me on Facebook and Melina Panetta and on LinkedIn. Perfect. Got you on the website. Got you on the socials. Melina, this has been delightful. Thank you so much thank for you so talking. Much. This was fun. And thank you all for listening. Whenever this hits, it'll probably be sometime in the first week of the new year. So hopefully you are, you've already gotten a great start. And remember, a little bit every day. <laughs> a little bit every day. We'll talk to all of you soon. Thank you so much. Thank you.